This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 476, recorded on January 21st, 2021. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that you can find your way in your home. News reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios. In a well, Mike, I was outside today. Uh, last couple days been pretty nice, right? We've had some pretty warm weather. I think cold weather's coming back, but pretty nice. Did you get out? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. It was good enough. It's been warm enough that the fence company was actually able to come out and start the replacement uh, of my fence oh, that blew right. down in that big storm yeah. in the fall. Yeah. So they actually came out and they today they just removed it and installed and cemented in the posts for it, and then they'll let that set before they do the rest. So it's been warm enough that the ground uh, wasn't frozen. They were able to do that. Uh, wood right now is like four thousand dollars a linear foot. Yeah, Hopefully. it seems like it. When I got the bill for this fence, I was like, uh, "Whoa, okay." Yeah insurance pay for it or do you very know? little like uh just because you know yeah you pay your deductible and then they're like oh it's so old and they didn't consider it totally out they're like well there's still parts that are standing i'm like yeah i'm not gonna replace like 75 percent of this fence and leave some little cruddy spot so yeah, we'll stuff back up yeah 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 um, so uh so very little no it doesn't look good well sorry about that just some nice warm weather i got with ed and we uh we lit candles on the deck this afternoon it was just so nice i couldn't I couldn't miss the opportunity, so I gave him a call at three and said, "Hey, you around?" And uh, and so I enjoyed. I got to sit outside. It got cold by, by five o'clock. I was like, "Okay, my hands are pretty cold. It's time to go in." But of course, we'll post a show with world class show notes, or at least some show notes, at the Average Guy TV. A uh, big thank to our Patreon subscribers. We picked up a new one this week, uh, Brian. I don't, you know what? I forgot to put Brian's name, but uh, Brian, a brand new five dollar uh, supporter for. A home gadget geeks that'll become important uh, maybe a little bit later in the show but brian thanks i'll add your uh brian f i will add your name down below you could be part of that list as well and kind of support what we do here on home gadget geeks head out to the average guy.tv slash patreon in a great way to kind of kind of get involved and uh, be involved financially in what we do we appreciate your support and what you do here on it and if you're struggling to get things done during the holidays. It's January. Everybody's kind of thinking diet, Mike, or either they're not drinking or they're on a diet. One of the two kinds of things happen. And great way to control, of course, your eating or your eating portions. Just give HelloFresh a try. We've got, uh, I've got like 40 bucks for you. I actually have more than that if you contact me, but head out to the average guy.tv slash HelloFresh. Click on the link there and, uh, and you, it gets you in. They give you a discount. You can give it a try. Try for one month. You might, it, Mike, it's, I say this all the time, it's changed my life. I mean, I just, we did a recipe on Sunday for the whole family. Kids came over. We, we just kind of quadrupled the recipe and it was great. I mean, it's just stuff we wouldn't normally eat. Pickled cucumbers. I just don't, I don't, you know, I don't normally eat. I wouldn't ever normally make that, you know. Right. No. It was those recipes you can keep like you guys do and then go get the ingredients yourself. So now, you know, you're getting the food plus right. you're getting a re building a recipe book, which is pretty cool. And we've talked about trying to switch over like, okay, now let's take the recipes and we'll make, we'll make it all ourselves during the week kind of deal. And dude, it's just too nice to have two meals taken care of the, the, you know, the paper bag is in the fridge, the meat's in the freezer. I pull it out at lunch. It's defrosted by the time we get there. I follow the instructions. Look, if I can do it, you can do it too. So give it a try. Uh, TheAverageGuy.tv slash HelloFresh. Great way to get in and get some things done and uh, and really kind of change kind of the way you eat. Um, Mike, at the end of, the, at the, end of the, the show last week, you did it to me again. I don't know. It's all your fault. Like, I, I blame you. I blame you and your Mac friends. Have you been, how long have you been waiting for me to have these conversations with you? Of course, at the end of the how show. Long I, how long have I been on the show? Like five yeah, years. I mean, this years. is, it was, it's the long con, Jim. I pulled the long con on you and it's, it, it might be happening tonight. I'm pretty excited. You, you must have. Um, you, I, I forget how we even got into the conversation, but, but we did. And we started talking about uh, the Mac, MacBook. See, I still get, I get confused. You're we talking that. about the MacBook Pro. That's what you had been thinking about. 
Yeah. And then throughout the conversation, at some point, I was like, well, have you thought about, because you were talking about using it at your desk primarily. Yeah. I was like, have you thought about the Mac Mini? And I think that's when we started really getting serious about the conversation. Ed Sullivan, who is a listener to the show, I think got me started thinking about it. He just picked up the MacBook Pro and knew the new M1. And I, I don't know, I just kind of thinking. And then somehow it came up in the conversation. And so if you haven't listened to the full post show from last week, a lot of conversation around it, it stirred up. It stirred up some interesting conversations that happened during the week, a little bit on Twitter, some on Discord, people saying, no, don't, don't do it. Don't go to the dark side. Some people saying, come to the dark side, come to the dark side. I think, uh, Mike, a couple things. Uh, and, and first of all, let, let me be really clear. I think at this point, I'm really leaning towards the mini. Like we talked about MacBook Pro and then right at the end of the conversation, you were kind of like, Hey, have you thought about, and I think in conjunction with the uh, chat room, they were like, what about the mini? And that kind of got me thinking like, hmm, this could, this could be an option, right? I mean, $699 base price, $899 with 16 gig of RAM instead of eight, uh, a little over $1,000 with, uh, with the 512 instead of 256. I'm showing it on the screen right now. You know, that's pretty basic. Uh, Ethernet for uh, two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, uh, HDMI 2.0, two USB-As, and headphone jack. Not incredibly complicated uh, and not a very big box. Mike, what do you think? Well, I think the conversation, too, makes a lot more sense because when we started talking about how you're going to use it, we started going down the rabbit hole of, well, man, you're going to need um, a hub, right? You're going to need some sort of base station to plug this thing into because... You know, we talked about that, the back of that being pretty basic. Well, your MacBook Pro only has, I think, four USB-C slash Thunderbolt 4 ports. Right. And so you would have needed, and not even HDMI, right? And you already have the monitors. You have the keyboard and mouse. Uh, you're going to need USB. You're going to need Ethernet. Right. And you were going to need some th probably $250 to $350 um, hub for all this. And so I, we started to think, well, man, okay, well, you're going to, so, okay. So number one, the laptop's already more expensive by quite a bit. Yeah. Right. And then we were going to add in the hub and it was starting to get extremely expensive. Two grand, right. I think yeah, by the, time right. I get the right hubs and all those things for it. Yeah. I think. And so I asked you, I was like, well, do you, are you going to be traveling with this thing? You're like, no, no, I'm probably going to be using it here. And, and when you do need to travel, right. You have, you have other laptops you can take with you. And I think it just makes a lot of sense. And I was even shocked, Jim, at that price point. I had not priced out a Mac Mini recently. That's a really good price for that new M1 chip, you know, 16 gigs. Uh, and and you, everyone's got to remember, too, the Mac ecosystem is so tied together that I think they utilize RAM a lot better. You know, now you guys know I'm on Windows now, so I'm using a Windows as my daily driver. And I do miss, I thought, you know, my Mac managed RAM a lot better sometimes than, than Windows can. Um, so 16 gig is, is going to go a long way. You probably could have gotten away with eight, but I, I, I agree with your thinking here of maybe going with 16. Yeah. Um, yeah. Still going back and forth because I've watched a ton of videos. Last week we asked you, uh, those of you who are listening, if you had something to say on this, we wanted you to weigh in. And uh, Kyle gave us a call. So, Kyle, by the way, if you head out to homegadgetgeeks.com, you can still weigh in. We'll play this next week on the show. But Kyle weighed in. Let's hear what Kyle has to say. Hey, Jim, I heard you talk about the M1 Max, and I just thought that was interesting. Uh, my brother was telling me about those over Christmas break, and for about three minutes, I thought about buying them for my teachers. It probably won't work out because we're all Windows and everything, but um, yeah, I just wanted to throw out there, I think that they have a limitation on the number of external displays you can use with them. So if you're looking at Docket and connect a bunch of monitors, you might have to double check on that, but they seem pretty impressive. See ya. Well, and Kyle, thanks That's a good for good point. Time. You can you can uh, leave a leave us a voicemail. Leave it on anything. Make it funny, whatever. Um, HomeGadgetGeeks.com. Little button in the butt right hand corner. Leave your message, Kyle. Thanks for leaving that um, as well. Well, Mike, that's the sticking point, right? Is I had a two monitor requirement, and this is kind of the conversation that went on via Twitter and a little bit in Discord. Is that the MacBook just didn't have the just did? It's really just supporting one monitor now. So I watched all these videos. There are peripherals even right now that you could buy that will extend it to three. So right. even though it says one, I could get away with three. Uh, on the Mac Mini, it's really two is what they support out of the box. So you can get one of those Thunderbolt ports and the HDMI 2 will give me two. 
that's the minimum requirement for me. So I don't really have a problem. Uh, I'm going to need to buy an adapter for the, for the Thunderbolt to plug mm-hmm. in. I already actually have the adapter for the, for the HDMI uh, for these, these monitors, by the way, they're old enough. They don't have HDMI in them. They're great monitors and I really love them. I want to use them. I'm not, so it's, I'm not going to take at least initially, won't be able to take full advantage of all the 4k goodness, right? That is there. Right. But you know, who knows, who knows what's next on that kind of thing. Right. Um, Mike, during the show, so monitors, not necessarily an issue. That was a deal breaker for me. Had to have multi monitor support. I have to have at least two down here in the command center to be able to do that during the show. Just as a side note, during the show, you talked me into getting onto the Apple card and man, is that super impressive? They send you a FedEx. Like I think I, applied right after the show or maybe even on the show. Yeah, I think on the show you applied for the credit card. I thought maybe we were going to buy it that night. We ended up not doing it because I was I'm kind of glad because I wanted to make the decision after we talked about it in the chat room, had some time to weigh in or whatever. So little Fe- FedEx envelope and then I haven't even touched the thing yet, but it comes, let's see if we can, I mean, it comes in, it's nice. It's a pretty card. I'll be honest, I don't even know if I'm going to take it out. Of, <laughs> if I'm going to take it out. I think I'm just going to leave it. I might mount it somewhere. So I'm, I'm turning, does it sound like I'm turning into a Mac fanboy? Is that maybe I, you know, the next, the next little piece I'll be interested in is if you were to use Apple pay out and about, and it's charging to that card, I think you will like the categorization and how it does it in the app and, and how it just kind of shows you in the wallet app. I enjoy that. Yeah. I don't know. I get that on my current chase card and I never use it. So yeah, they do the same thing, but um, it, it, listen, it was a super pretty experience. Like you got that, it came in FedEx, pull it out, beautiful card. Uh, so great experience. I think the question's why now, like what, wh- why would I need to do this right now? And typically I am a way behind the power curve kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Like I buy, you know, I'm buying the things after they've been here and been out and the price is kind of dropped. We're definitely not in that situation right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that doesn't happen with Apple very often, right? So if you wait on this, even if could, the only thing you could wait on is get wait till they hit the refurb store, because Apple does have a refurb store. So if you wanted to get a refurbished unit, um, but otherwise, you know, like there's just no, it just doesn't happen that often with Apple products. Well, I have a little M1 Envy. Kind of, kind of what I said last week. Uh, mm-hmm. I picked that up. I'm kind of like, oh man, this thing, like in its new, I've never been first day kind of guy. Although you now have influenced me to kind of, you know. Uh, You've had two well, day one purchases, essentially. You pre-ordered the iPhone, right? No, yeah, I did. I was still it, a pre-order. Well, it was right on, it was right that weekend. So That's technically right. not, but pretty close. You had yours a day or so before me. So, you know, that's an unusual experience for me. It was such a great deal. So I got a little M1 Envy. Uh, How do I plan to use this? So really, a lot of people ask me this week, kind of like, well, what's your use case? It's video and audio editing. This box, which is struggling a little bit at this point, it's four or five years old, 4770, uh, uh, i7, 4770, 16 gig of RAM that's in it. It's been a good box. Got an SSD drive. It's been okay, but I've been kind of thinking like, like, okay, at some point, you know, I'm going to probably need to replace it. Why not now? So audio and video processing, this live streaming. So when we do the podcasting, Mike, last week, my camera was flickering a little bit. And I'm wondering how much of that is the PC or is it the camera? Okay. That's a question. Like, right? maybe, maybe it's getting long in the tooth on the PC side. And then, of course, just just general browsing. Um, and thank you, by the way, Sarah. It's not even Valentine's Day, and look look what she brought back here. Some candy hearts is what. What are. a sweetheart! A little sweet, little sweetheart. She knows I have a sweet tooth. So, um, so general browsing. But I, I listen. I spend a lot of time on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time watching stuff. I spend a lot of time doing that. I think the thing you talked me into last week was, of course, the integration. Ed mentioned this as well when I was on the phone with him. The integration between my phone and my PC. Messages, yep. Yep. pictures, right? All those kinds of things. Right. Anything When you think of use case, Mike, anything I might be missing in there as far as other things to take advantage of, maybe I haven't even thought about? 
No, actually, kind of the opposite. I, you know, so I've obviously made the switch to Windows, right? Um, but we still run a Mac laptop in the house. It just has become Hannah's, my wife's um, laptop she uses for teaching. She's a teacher now. So she uses it more than I do. But Jim, I think what I see now is unless you are a gamer, right? Because i that's the sole reason I switched to Windows is because I switched to PC gaming from console. And gaming, I, I would just write gaming off on a Mac. I, I'll just say that. Like if you are trying to game, just just skip the Mac. There are some games you can do, but I just I, I wouldn't try and do it. Um, besides gaming, I think that they have become so similar. And I think, Jim, it has a lot to do with a lot of the things we do now are in a web browser, that it doesn't matter what system you're on, it works in the web browser. And if you need to do a little audio editing or need to do a little video editing, you know, you're going to have apps on both sides that do it. You, you may need to learn a different workflow depending on like the video app, but the audio apps you use are on Mac, right? I think all this stuff is a very natural that you can use either system. So I think for you, there's the biggest change, I think is just going to be getting used to the UI, right? And playing around and, you know, and getting used to kind of how it works. But I don't think it's going to disrupt your workflow as far as applications or anything like that. I think you're going to have a, a pretty solid experience there uh, as long as you can kind of get used to the, the ecosystem. Uh, it gets knocked for just the limited number of ports that are on there. All the videos that I watch, again, I, I must have watched 50 hours of videos this week. Uh, just on the mini, uh, or talking about these this M1 offering, right? And kind of, I narrowed it down. I think early in the week we kind of moved away from the, the 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 laptop and moved more toward the mini. So I kind of focused on that. So it's lack of ports, two USB A's. Okay, well I'm I've got a three. I have a really nice three O dock that things like my keyboard and mouse, anything else I want to plug into it can go right. That kind of stuff. Put the camera in the second one. I don't attach storage, and now why would I attach it to USB A anyways? It would, it would need to go Thunderbolt if it was going to go any way yeah. in storage, right? I, I have tons of network storage, so that's really the way I'm doing things. A lot of the videos I watched, a lot of these guys, ladies, attach SSD really fast SSD storage to it. It's gotten knocked. This version of the M1 has gotten knocked for some slow transfer speeds. Uh, especially with SSD, they should be faster. That's probably something Mac will fix. Not an issue for me. I'm not going to put an external hard drive on it. It's just, it's not going to exist, right? Uh, at least in my system. Now, could I do it? Yeah. Could they fix it? Sure. It will get there, right? We talked about the monitor support. It's there. Uh, networking, it's fine. Like, I can't, I'm having a hard time. Then I watched some of the, I went and watched some of the performance videos on it. Let's talk the difference between 8 and 16. Like 8, and, 8, 8 gig, 16 gig of RAM. Not a huge difference in all the videos that I watched as they compared the two. There was only one case, and that comes in video rendering. Mm -hmm. 16 is really better than the 8. Mike, I, I, I'm kind of leaning back towards 8 because it's just more economical. It's 200 extra bucks for the 16, right? But, Am, well, am, so, am so you, you're the one who you convinced me the opposite way last week. So I would have, yes, I was the original one saying, I don't think you need... 16 so i would be leaning more towards going eight um but then you were kind of talking last week and what you convinced me with is is future proofing right like for you when you buy this computer you're going to be thinking about well this is you know you keep computers for so long like a lot of us do right this thing is gonna be a workhorse so you know why not future proof it and again we talked about how it's not user accessible not user upgradable ram anymore so once you make the decision that's the decision that you got to stick with so I think you're thinking on 16 gig is is right. I don't think you would regret it if you went that way. Yeah, tough not to regret the decision when you have it. And but you know, as you're dropping an extra 200 bucks for it, and you're kind of thinking, oh man, that's 200. That's it when you when you you know price per gig for that. By the way, right. it's it's not very like that's not good pricing. Like it's pretty expensive to do it. You're definitely paying the Apple tax for good to go from eight to 16. It's a tough one to swallow. I, I got to admit, I'm a little stuck. If there was probably one thought I had that I struggled the most with this week, as I was thinking about it, it was that eight versus 16. Uh, Nathaniel says in the chat room, he got his, uh, Mac, uh his M1 yesterday, Mac mini mm -hmm. simple setup fast, only using one monitor. That's great. Hopefully it's a big gigantic monitor. <laughs> 
Nathaniel. I, I and I actually, to be honest, that's actually a good consideration. I didn't think about that. You could go ultra wide. Yeah, I have an ultra wide that sits right here that I could plug it into and make it work. Not a bad so, idea at all. I'm sure it'll get a test um, in there. So, okay, so I'm, that I spent a lot of time thinking 16, eight, go back and forth. I'm just gonna do eight. It's just simpler. No, I'm gonna do 16. A couple videos that I watched. We're more favorable towards the 16, even if, like you said, even if you're it, it, the performance for most people, you won't notice any difference because the because this memory is so integrated in with the chip and it's so much more efficient. The 16 gig of RAM that I have on my Windows Core i7 box is not the same 16 gig of RAM that right is in the Mac Mini, right? It's true because there's that other idea too. Like I've been thinking for the last. I don't know, year, I need to take everything to 64 gig in the house. Like just, I need to get more Ram, especially when we try to freaking run Chrome, like just open up Chrome. It takes like eight, eight gig right there. Right. You know, just opening the thing up. So, okay. So I struggle with that. The other struggle is honestly hard drive space. I ask you the question 256 versus 512. I asked you the question last week. How much do you think the OS takes? Takes about 50. Like, it, that's not exact, but that's pretty close in the work that I did. So you have about 200 left. And I, I'm kind of thinking, Mike, 200 is pretty good. Like, that's a pretty good, right? I mean, do I really need an additional 300 on, on top of that? Or, well, it would be another 250 on top of that. What do you think? The hard drive, you know, I would say. Because it's another 200. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> He's throwing out $200 bills. Oh, yeah. that That is the hard part. If if I were ordering this Mac, I would have gone 512 or even higher if I could um, and stuck with 8 gig of memory. So I, I would, if it was me, that's the way I would be doing it. It's the 512 hard drive, but only 8 gig. So I would use my 200 there only because I have a, what is that? I think I have a, in this machine, I'm wishing I had gone higher for certain reasons. I didn't think I would need a lot of storage. So I actually have three hard drives in this computer, but I wish my NVMe, my, cause I have a 500 gig. I wish it was bigger because that speed on that NVMe is so fast. I love it for like video editing, using it as a scratch disc for when you're video editing That NVMe speed is just so high that I wish I had gone higher there so I could have more utilization of that NVMe speed. Cause everything else I attach, you know, the SATA SSD or the spinner is just not as fast. That's the only reason I think, I think upgrading to 512 would be worth it. Okay. Those, there's really not that much more to consider. Like we, we've kind of been through apps. Okay. The apps that I need to run, you know, I can use iMovie. I'm, I'm, that's the, the that I'm using Windows Movie Maker right now, which is my right. 2012 software. So, I mean, I can use, uh, I can use GarageBand for the audio if I want to, if I want to do or that. Audacity. Or Audacity. Or that's, and that's what I currently use, uh, mm -hmm. Audacity, to get it done. Nothing else changes. When I'm done with the file, it goes to Auphonic. That's a web service, right? So, right. so I'm on that. Well, I, when I store it, they get, when the video files that we make for this besides YouTube, they go to Mediafire. So it's just, a, it's just a web service. 90% of what I do now is on the web. Mm -hmm. I just, it's, software is not a big deal. In fact, I can run Mac app or I can run iPhone apps on this thing. Can I? Can I? Can I, I think or, so now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I love the Coinbase app on the iPhone. How convenient will it be to have it just on my computer instead of right. it being like, instead of having to go to Coinbase and all the other things, right? I haven't, I haven't been through that experience. I don't know how it worked, but Weather Radar works great on my phone. It'd be great. Flight, flight, 20, uh, flight Tracker 24 is another app. It's okay in the browser, but it's really good on the, it's the, 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 the iPhone app is really good. I think one of the things I heard throughout the week is a lot of that stuff, still not all of it is 100% ready. Right, right. Rosetta came up a whole bunch in these, like, hey, I'm still running this on Rosetta, right? And Which I guess is the emulator for, for the old apps. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, nothing that, nothing but necessarily alarmed me. The Go big ahead. apps are going to get ported over, right? They're going to end up being native 
after after not too long. And I think really for you, you know, there weren't many options as far as configuration. It's just the the alternative of buying a Windows based system and what would a thousand dollars get you in Windows. So it's it's easy to compare because my machine I built was a thousand dollars, right? So for me, it was sixteen gigs of RAM, yep. same. Uh, a Ryzen 5 3600, which you could probably get the new Ryzen series now for the same price I got it for a year ago. Um, a 1660 super graphics card, the motherboard, the case, and things like that. But I think for the nice small form factor, the M1 chip, which I really like, I, I have M1 MV2. Uh, hmm. I, I think at that price, I mean, I know it's not tested fully yet, uh, but I think just having access to that chip, um, if, if all else is the same, I think it's a great choice. You really start to look at that. I mean, I, everyone says the Apple tax, and I get it, right? Like, it's not user accessible. I don't have a massive case to put stuff in. Uh, but some people consider that a benefit, right? A nice, sleek system. I mean, those things are tiny. Um, yeah, the, as far as the hardware goes, there's not... I mean, there is an Apple tax, but it's not as astronomical no. as it used to be. I, it's, I, it didn't feel that way to me. I, no. You know, you've heard me complain about the 200 and the 200. Like, that is definitely... Yes, those are, those are Apple tax, for sure. Definitely in there. Yes. Jay Madison, who's coming back here in February, when we interviewed him, oh, back in the summer, you know, he has that super clean desk. And I started thinking, like, I started looking around at my desk, like, hmm, you know, like, now you I got the new sleek Mac. You got to make everything else nice you know, and sleek. Right on. It's kind of like, I actually need a whole new desk. But the, the, I started kind of thinking, like, okay, this is my desk. And then right behind me is a rack. And I've got three PCs on that rack that back right up to the desk. And while I've done everything to minimize the fan noise, they're still right there. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, you know, I could just run the Mac here. I've got a Dell mini that I could run the, I could power, use to power the other monitors on the desk. Um, I could move everything to the rack that's on the other side of the wall and for the PCs that I need, which really like Unraid, uh, my media server box, um, the you know all the other things are all remote access anyway. Right. right. So I'm assuming I can I can do Windows remote access right on this. Yes, thing. there's a there's an RDP app and, and it works great from Microsoft. Um, uh, Tony is saying get it under the desk. No, listen, I'm gonna look at this thing. <laughs> Like, I want to see it. I just want it to, I want it to be clean on the desk. I, I mean, it's a great way to do that, uh, Tony, to mount it underneath there. But um, I, 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 I like to see um, those things as well. But yeah, get everything moved. Like, move it over and take that rack that's in front of the desk, repurpose it somewhere else, and really kind of clean up this area down here to be really sleek and simple. I mean, I got cables freaking everywhere down here. <laughs> I do too. I mean, it, it, mine looks decently clean up top and then down below, I just, I don't care. And Jimmy, every day I look at it, I'm like, man, I would love the nice clean look. And then I remember two things. One, I'm in my basement. <laughs> like it's never going to look super cool down here. And two, I'm just so utilitarian about everything. Like my workbench is organized yet still cluttered, right? It doesn't like... Because I just, I know where everything's at. I have access to it. The cables, right? I have charging cables laid out on this desk that don't look good. But hey, when I need to plug in my phone, it's right there. So I don't know. I, I go back and forth on whether I want the clean look or I want utilitarian. Like, it's so useful. I, it might just not look as pretty. A couple, uh, couple comments from the chat room. Nathaniel saying he is running his off a 27-inch Apple Thunderbolt. Needs the Mac adapter. I'm assuming that's the monitor. And then, um, Wait, Daniel, see. is that the actual Apple made monitor for it? I think that's, I think that's what he's, well, we'll, yeah. we'll get a response. I was just, I was just wondering why you, they made, there's an, you need an adapter to use their own monitor. They should fix that. <laughs> you think? Well, yeah. Hey, listen, this M1 thing, one this, cable that goes. this, this M1 thing is, it's thrown a few curveballs to them. Right. As I'm, as I've been watching these videos. He says, there aren't many configuration choices. And to be honest, yeah, there are, there's two. <laughs> SSD, right. RAM. That's really all you're configuring. Uh, Tony says, with the fix it, uh, the iFixit teardown, could, it could even be smaller. And it really can be. Like, it's, what, seven and seven by seven. And they could probably do a little puck that's five by five because there's a lot of space around the sides where uh, they could fit some things in. So um, lots of, I watched a couple teardown um, uh, a couple tear down. He says Apple Thunderbolt display. 
Um, uh, Joe says the adapter is probably 200 bucks. The adapter I need is 30. So it's not, it's not going to be too bad uh, for me to get in there. I could, Mike, it did cause me to take a look at um, different uh, uh, docs too, while we were talking about it. Is it o- OWC? Is OWC, that- Other World Computing. Yeah, yeah, they are who all the Mac, the hardcore Mac fanboys suggest OWC. Um, but they're, they're not cheap. I mean, I think no. you, their, their bottom is uh, 149. Yeah, those are going to be go up to two ninety nine. So it's like you're like it's it's so hard because you gotta like (laughs) we've gotten into a space now where the form factor of the plug doesn't tell you what it is, right? Because it's a USB C form factor. It's Thunderbolt though, so now when you get a a hub, you don't know what kind of capabilities you're going to get because it plugs in. Yes, it plugs into the right port. But like, what speeds are we going at? What am I getting out of this thing? So I think OWC tries to focus on the higher end of, okay, how can we max maximize that? Uh, Joe was joking in the chat that that, dis- that adapter probably cost 200. Well, you know, at least we're not buying the Mac Pro because the wheels for the bottom of the Mac Pro, if you want the wheels for it, 700 bucks just for the wheels on that Mac Pro. So there's that, there's like the best example of Apple tax is uh, yeah. the wheels on their Mac Pro being $700. Well, and wasn't this, wasn't there a $7,000 monitor that had a thousand dollar stand or something? Yeah, like yeah. Back, yeah. back in the day. Brian, our newest Patreon uh, supporter, Brian, thanks for doing that. Says I bought the OWC RAM for my 2020 iMac. Good product for a good price. Unfortunately, the M1 products don't have replaceable RAM. And there, there's a good reason. Because it's all integrated. Solder on the board. It's all it's all integrated. Could they do that, Mike? Could it be? Does it need to be soldered on the board for this? Or that's I what know. I think that's what they say, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know what the difference would be, but okay. So if I go, if I'm doing this thing, here's my thoughts. Gotta be 16. Like I, I would feel foolish if I'm gonna spend this kind of money. Old gym, Windows gym would spend, would buy the eight <laughs> and go, well, I can probably get away with it. And then three years, you know, t- two years from now, I'd be super pissed that it yep. wasn't working. Cause I think uh, one of the guys said, he doesn't think Mac is going to, that they're going to move on pretty quickly to the next chipset, whatever that is. And this won't get, this won't get all the love and attention it needs. I don't know. We'll find out about that. But I, I think there's going to be a flurry of upgrades, updates, software stuff that come to make some of these things work, right? So I'm I'm going to hold you accountable if they don't, Uyghur. I'm just going to be. Oh, oh, man. That's a, lot, that's a lot of pressure. Let's not do this. I don't know if I'm up for that. Yeah, it's just your last chance to talk me into no, I, and out of this. I'm talking you into it for okay. sure. I, I think you're going to like it. So, and, and didn't we look last week? Isn't there like a 30-day return policy on there this is. thing. If you, so if you really have that regret, you get it all set up and you're like, ah, no. So, okay. Speaking of more money we're going to spend, the only other addition that I may, and I think you wait until you get it in front of you. Um, the using a mouse is not as the track pad that they sell is great on Mac. Mac is all about the gestures. And when you get really proficient with them, you can definitely use a mouse. No big deal. But I, I've plugged in a mouse to the laptop before. I'm like, wait, I can't even do the thing I want to do because I don't know how to do that with a mouse. Like, I just know that expanding with five fingers, swiping with three, swiping with two, you start to get really used to that. So something you may want to consider uh, if you okay. if you end up pulling the trigger. Okay. Uh, Nathaniel says 16 gig. This is what he's, this is his, he's weighing in. 16 gig, one terabyte SSD, done. Plan on five years of use. What do you think? Interesting. Yeah. Five years. So that- jumping up to the one terabyte. Um, man, so is the one terabyte an extra like what four hundred dollars? Another two hundred bucks. Man, so they really so you two hundred to get up to five. So two hundred for two hundred fifty gigs, and then only another two hundred to get an extra five hundred. I think so. Um, so for you, Jim, you have so much home storage yeah. that I don't think that's going to be that big of an issue, especially with uh, the. Um, Moro data box that you have, yeah. you know, I think a lot of that stuff's going to integrate so well. And if this was a laptop, I might agree, you know, being able to have all that stuff with you, if you were to go out on the road for a while, if you're traveling more, when everything dies down, I think for your Mac mini with all your extra storage you have, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. 
I would go trackpad before I spent money on an extra 500 gigs on top of the 500 you're going to get. I would get a a peripheral, like I would just get the actual Apple keyboard and trackpad. The Apple keyboard, I, I've always liked it. Yeah. No, I'm a big fan. Didn't you used to have the Apple keyboard? Actually, I still do. Do you really? (laughs) Is it? (laughs) Well, there you go. You don't even need to buy it then. There you go. Uh, No, it's my best kept secret is that I've only had Apple keyboards for the last 10 years. Probably. They're just so great. And they're wired. I don't do anything wireless. I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy, this is, I'm not going to buy their Bluetooth keyboards. I'm just not. There's been some, while they work, there's been some re- complaints from, from the early testers that the, the, the Mac shows it's not connected when it's connected, but it works. So I'm sure they'll get that ironed out in the drivers, but it's like, no, I think I can pretty much use my Logitech mouse and my Apple keyboard that I currently use. Yeah. And that's, that's, it's where I would go. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even necessarily change anything. So, um, I love, I love the Apple keyboard, especially for, um, for podcasting. Cause it's so quiet and I know they make other ones that are quiet that way, but it's just, this has been the most durable, rugged keyboard I've ever had. I mean, it was used when I bought it and I've, they, I've had three of them and they just, they just crush it. Okay. So 16, it's Mac mini 16. I'm doing 512. That's the, I, I, I can't, 256 just is a little scary. One terabyte, no, no, no offense, Nathaniel. One terabyte's a little too much for, I think for what I need. I think a lot of that space will sit. Un- yeah. I, so I just thought of the other thing I was going to mention earlier in the show. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, actually, Jim, this is another one that won't apply to you, but actually could probably really apply to Nathaniel. Um, the Mac mini can act as they just has this one little tick box and it can be a cache server for all iCloud data in your home. So if you have a bunch of iPhone users in your home, if your whole family's iCloud and they're upload, you know, cause every night, right. Your photos are uploading to iCloud um, apps are being downloaded. So if I update Facebook and Jim, you update Facebook um, those updates can be cached. So you know, that is something where, you know, it may for someone, if that, you know, for you, you're the only iPhone user in the house, right? So it's probably not beneficial. Uh, right. But that could be a, a use case yeah. for a much bigger internal drive. Cause if you're caching all that stuff for the network uh, and it only, it doesn't not allow you to store it on external storage. Uh, it allows you to on direct attached, but not to networked drives. Last question, Apple care. Yes or no. Oh, that's a really good question. Mm-hmm. For all of 90 bucks, ninety, I think so, seventy nine, eighty nine, something like that. I think that's so tough. I've I've gone back and forth on this. I used to be such a yes, it's so worth it, but that was also when they had the Genius Bar, so you would take it in and, and they would help you a lot more if you had Apple Care. But uh, since the Genius Bar is no longer, mm-hmm. since this thing isn't portable, you're not going to be dropping this thing. Uh, I don't know. Guys, uh, the chat, I, I wonder what chat thinks. I can buy it after the fact, can I? Only they, for up to like 30 days or 60 days. You have like 30 to 60 days. That's It's going to get a 30-day eval for me anyways, right? That's, that's true. Yeah. It's really, I'm going to buy this thing. We're going to talk about it for 30 days. And then we're going to do a show that says, do I keep it? Right. I mean, yep. I got 30 days. It doesn't mean right. I have to keep it right along those lines. Okay. All right. I think I'm ready. Yeah. I think. Were you going to say something? I, I was going to address. So actually, I, I went, Nathaniel was asking I, when he was talking, I was mentioning him and the whole caching thing. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah, Nathaniel, if you hadn't heard of it, it's just in your sharing preferences. You can go to, I think, I can't remember what it's called, but it's something caching. Uh, and just turn it on. Land cache bundle does not work with Mac stuff. So uh, this though will cache your iCloud data for everyone in the home. And then I believe it does, I know for sure it does Mac updates. So it was hilarious because I did, when I was running my iMac and my my laptop, when it would download those updates, the first one would go slow. The second one was like, boop, done. So uh, just a very simple turn it on. Land cache bundle does, it will not do anything with the Apple stuff. So you would just need to flip that switch on the Mac mini. It's literally as easy as flipping a switch. And then your, your phones and devices will just know it's there and no DNS settings or anything. It just, it's Apple magic. It's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, Lancash. I've got that running on my Unraid box and I just love yeah, it. Lancash bundle is great too. Yeah. Um, all right. It's a done deal. 
Delivers. There it is. Look at that. Delivers All February right. 12th, which today is what's today? The 21st. That's three weeks. Yeah. Right. Almost All right. Three. Look at that. All right. It's on so, its way. So 16, 512 on its way on the desk. It's going to replace. Uh, let's see. What day of the week is that? Hopefully they'll deliver it early. I think I, I, that does happen with Apple. I think there's a possibility of that. They almost always under deliver, right? So that is a, that's Friday. It's, these have oh. already been released. So it's not like they're pushing up on a release yeah. date. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Friday, the 12th. So maybe. There goes your weekend. Yeah. Me. <laughs> well, Just mark it off on the calendar now. Jim's playing with his new toy. Get it early and, um, and we'll we get open on the show. Yeah. We'll a show with it. We've, I've done some, I've done a whole bunch of scheduling, by the way, of folks coming on. And Aaron Lawrence would be on that night, the the 11th, February 11th. Aaron's coming back. Boy, it'd be great to have that on the show with Aaron because she'd yeah. be a great person to talk to about it. So I think she's, I think she's fully back, right? I think so. Yeah. So I think she is. So yeah, I mentioned, um, uh, so it's honest. So I did it. I'm, 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 well, it's not totally official. Uh, and it's not my first, it's not my first Apple. It's not my first Mac. Okay. But it's been a while. It has been a while and we'll give it a shot. The The plan will be to, I mentioned, clear out the PCs as much as I can, put it on the desk, run two monitors, then power the other monitors with Windows boxes. I am not, I think some people thought I was getting rid of, of Windows. Listen, trust me, I got too much invested in that ecosystem. Um, the goal really to be learn both. Like I want to be able to talk about, I've been thinking about buying a mini for a long time and I just never, it was one of those things, Mike, where I was always kind of like, yeah, I'll use it for a week. It's kind of like Linux for me or Ubuntu right. I yeah. use it for a week. And then I'm like, this sucks. I need, I'm going back to windows. Um, and, but so I'm going to be on windows a bunch. I work on windows at work. So still going to continue to be on windows, but it really, really gave me a good opportunity to move all of my podcast processing, including live streaming, to the platform. And I think it has really, it has a really good chance, uh, that point of, of, of really kind of settling in and being able to, uh, into fit into it. So, all right, it's coming February 12th. I'm it's exciting. Pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. Listen, I, I don't know if I've thought more about a single purchase ever in this hours, hours of YouTube videos. Mark. It makes me feel better though, that you didn't do it last week. And it wasn't like a complete impulse buy that you gave it a week, did all your research and that it was still at this point, something you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So thanks for working it through with me. It's been kind of fun to just spend some time in for all of you out in the chat room. Uh, 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 who's, who's given me advice, talked through some things. I uh, appreciate you guys um, as well. Been really, really helpful to kind of think it through. Um, it will be my next, if it survives 30 days, it'll be my next kind of desktop for a while, I think. And uh, we'll kind of see how things go from there. So pretty cool. I was, uh, I won't lie, Jim, before when this was a possibility, I was trying to figure out a way to pipe in uh, my video through an app where I could have preset me and I was going to set it for, I just faded out of this chair and also it was just an empty chair as you, if you did the purchase, but I, I wasn't that technically inclined. I didn't know how to do that. So what a, what a, what a weird world we live in. So it's, it's a weird world. Crazy stuff. I, all right, we'll, we'll move on from there. Mike, uh, last week at the end of the show, we also spent a little bit of time talking about the ultimate dashboard for Unraid. And I, I, I didn't, I didn't, Joe, one of the developers contacted me and said, Hey, I, I don't think you showed the right thing. I think you were talking about one thing, but showing something else. And both you and I kind of looked and we're like, ah, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, one is the ultimate dashboard for Unraid is freaking cool. Like, I'm not going to lie. I asked Joe to be on the show. I was like, can you come on and talk more about this? So we're not going to do a deep dive on it now. Uh, but Mike talked a little bit about it last week. Um, I'll put a link to the details on the, uh, this is on the forum site, the unraid.net uh, forum site. Um, but Mike, I, I mean, in a second, I'm going to show you some of the dashboards I came up with, but this is, this is super cool stuff. It's, it's right? really cool. 
Yeah, yeah. My favorite part, you know, they said version 1.5. And yeah, apologies, Joe. We just showed the Unraids blog post about it. Um, yeah. So I th- th- if the screenshot was wrong, I think that's what Jim was showing. Um, I-, I like a lot of the stuff they've been doing. So I'm excited to get him on because I'll be honest, there's a lot of things I think there's a lot of, I think they call them blocks in Grafana. I'm not, a, I'm not an avid Grafana person. Uh, I think there's ways to add in more that I just don't know how to do. Because I know version 1.5 um but has the ability to add plex and so i'm excited about about getting that in there as well yeah one six is an active development so version 1.6 is coming so probably by the time we get him on here um we'll have some updated information uh as well and i'm just kind of realizing i gave him some dates and then i think i got the wrong dates nope i did get the right dates okay good so joe thanks for reaching out to me i really appreciate that he had he, it was funny. I think he had posted in, somebody had let him know, and they posted in the Unraid forums, hey, I heard somebody talking about this. And then there was this whole bunch of conversation about getting to us. I'm like, I didn't think we were that hard to find. <laughs> and uh, and so he sent me an email, and I said, no, I'd love to have you on the show. It'd be, it'd be fun to have you come and talk about it. Um, so, Joe, thanks for, we're working on a date at this point, but we'll get Joe to come on and spend a little time talking about it. We got to get John back, too, uh, to talk about, the unraid right uh, john from from unraid yep. and um so i'm working i got to work on that one when i think he said he'd come back when they do the next major release which i don't think's happened yet so i think we're okay on time and uh, we'll get him back and then you and i we've been talking plex versus channels and so uh so Is there another big decision there yeah i guess who reached out to me john maddox from channels oh um, cool all right. Three developers. Yeah. Said, hey, I want to talk gadgets. You got a few minutes. So I called him. He's a huge gadget guy. And then he, he kind of told me the story of why they did channels. And they really never intended it to be a big deal. But it's it's starting to work out. And um, this this week, I don't, did I mention it on the show last week? This week, at some point, Sarah said, the Plex, it's done. She's like, I'm good. Channels is good. I like it. Let's move to it. And so we, we shut off, has been made. Yeah, shut off all the recorded programs on Plex, uh, removed all the, the programs, the, the recorded programs that we had there and us uh, and canceled my subscription over there. Okay. I and the five bucks, I think it's five, four ninety nine. Yeah. For the Plex pass and uh, channels has 30 day. Oh, he needed it. We need to clarify something on this. So channels has a 30 day free trial full version 30 days just give it a try if that's what you want and then um the apps that you found remember we were looking through and you're like oh it's 25 bucks for the android app yeah not if you have a subscription oh got it okay yeah so have the subscription all the apps are free and some of the apps you might have been looking at may not even been actual channels developed apps he says there's a whole bunch of people that have done some things out there that i was on on their website okay Okay, good. Oh, just to make sure. But he did say, he did say when you're on their when you're on their plan that the apps are free. So um, does that mean I'm ditching Plex? No. Like, there's still some things that I I'm, I'm going to keep. I'm just not going to have a Plex pass. But there's still some things in Plex. There's some channels there that are interesting. There's some functionality there that's cool. They're doing some interesting things. I don't have a huge library, so that doesn't matter. Because I'm not, a lot of guys would say, well, I've got this huge Plex library that I built. Right. Well, that's not, I don't. So I I, I don't have a lot of things to kind of keep me there. Um, some integration, some sharing things. Uh, you guys are using it in the community. So I don't want to completely ditch it. So I'm not totally ditching it. It's still on the NVIDIA Shield, but so is Channels. <laughs> And that's what we're using. So uh, we'll have John on here in a couple of weeks. He's coming up on the 18th of February and we'll come on. It, it, we're not going to, we'll talk some about channels. He's a huge gadget nerd. So it'll be fun that's to have fun. him on. Yeah. It'll be fun so do they, him. do they have a plan where you don't need your HD home run? Like, do they have like an, they, they don't have like an online streaming. Like, no, yeah, no, I don't think they're in that. Yeah. I, to be honest with you, I took a really narrow view of this. Could it go on eight? Could I have HD home runs? Can it play those? Do it well and record them. That's, that's my use case. That's what it does really well. We'll have John on to talk about. They're still in active development. So um, uh, should be uh, super cool 
And, um, and so, um, we're looking for that. Um, Dave says, congratulations. I'm in the down with Dave. So, uh, for, for buying the Mac and then Joe says, there's been a great disturbance <laughs> in the force. Uh, and that is, that is, uh, yeah. that's very true. So, um, uh, we are, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about John coming on and, uh, excited to talk about that as well. Oh, so I wanted to mention, Mike, uh, let me, uh, I made some, I made some, you know, we were talking about Joe's dashboards. Yeah. I can't let Joe have all the fun, right? I mean, so this week, for, for those of you who are not familiar with the, the necessary, the dashboards uh, that come in um, uh, Home Assistant, sorry. The For a second there, you know, you have that fear when you just don't, the word is just not there and you're like, yep. I'm never going to get there. <laughs> I just got your life flashes before your eyes. You start no, sweating. I've only talked about this ad nauseum for the last two months. And I can't right. remember the word home assistant. This Mike for, for folks, uh, if you're listening to the audio, you might want to come and watch the video for this. We're going to, this, this is pretty much going to be video till the end of the show, but a um, couple things on it. So Mike, this is my base home assistant. What do they call that? There's a name, the Lovelace, Lovelace right? Yep. And they kind of recommend you leave this one. You don't change this one because it updates, yeah. right? Is they're making updates to Lovelace? This is the one that updates, right? And every new integration you add or new devices just gets put in here automatically. So whereas if you do a custom dashboard, it you know it only puts in there what you want. This just is if you add your MyQ garage, all of a sudden that'll just show up in this dashboard. Yeah. So I would leave this one standard. Yeah. Now I am actually running this off my Surface Pro three. Touch screen makes a great, great makes a great home assistant kind of dashboard. It's on my desk. You'll see why here in a second. But I've always kind of wanted to turn the surface into into an automation. Mm -hmm. It's just really good at it. Um, now I am streaming off of it as well, and it's a little slow. This thing's a little underpowered. No surprise, it's got four gig of RAM, and Windows is just absolutely crushing it. So. Um, it, it doesn't respond. And now that I'm running StreamYard on it, it's responding even slower. All right. So I made some additional dashboards. I went in and um, uh, so I created one called All Lights. These are all the lights in the house that are available. It tells me if they're on or off and where they're located, right? The way I name them, front door, litter box, light. Yes, our cats have a litter box light. <laughs> We have a light just for them. Front room, front door, blah, blah, blah. But now my, that's when you get a motion sensor on is the kitty and the kitty. Yeah. Light yeah. as they walk in, it turns on for them. I can't, I kind of have one of those too. Yeah. So, <laughs> just saying, it's pretty spoiled cats. I love um, it. Trying not to be, trying not to be too, too, too spoiling too much. But, but Mike, a quick dashboard if I want to, if I'm down here and I want to see, okay, what's on in the house, right? Right. I can get a quick look during the day. These are all blue at night, they're all lit. If I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to turn off these studio lights, I could just click on that. It would turn the studio lights off. You'll see it turn off there and turn them back on. And it gives me the ability right from my desk just to kind of have all, you know, this is one of the things I could never really figure out in the, in the habitat was the various dashboards and, and the, their displays and stuff. And so this is just big fat buttons for my big fat fingers, yeah. right. To be able to push. Um, so I put all lights in the dashboard. Um, that was kind of fun. One of the, I, I mentioned last week, one of the cool things is of course it sees my printer. And so this would be primarily for my phone, actually, this screen. If I wanted to check the status of the ink from, I get a call from Sarah. It's not printing, you know, some of those kinds of things, whatever. The ink, I could double check. I could come in here. Is the ink, where are we at? Do I need to have another one on hand? I do wish it would push the usage statistics here so I could kind of see. Yeah. Like the, the queue too, like if there's a queue that it's going, what's going on? It's some of that. There is some of that. I, I need to go back and see what's available and what's not on that. But I, I, I thought I looked and I couldn't see like number of pages printed since this cartridge was changed. I don't think I, I don't, I have to go back. All honest, honestly, I have to go back and check. But <clears throat> cool little dashboard, really easy to see where my ink cartridges are at. This is my favorite one uh, that I put up. And I just call it outside. So it's an opportunity of all the things. Now I'm stuck in the house. This is kind of all the things that are going on outside. So I can kind of see across the top uh, some status. The printer status is up there again. And the status of the printer. 
I have the coronavirus um, statistics that go across the top. So I can see those numbers if I want to customize them on my local IP address, whether it's the sun is up or the sun is down. That's kind of fun to see. And then, Mike, some of the lights that are down here. So across the top, studio lights overhead, garage, those are down here. So it's quick. I leave this up all day now. This is how I kind of monitor my ring system, right? Yeah. The one thing I don't like, of course, ring doesn't stream, right? So I just get the most recent recording. So what you're seeing there is the last time both of them are me, but the last time it recorded. And I'm not going to do it because the PC's over already overwhelmed with streaming. But if I pushed on that picture, it would play that video for me. So pretty cool. It, to be honest, there could be a little work that Ring could do with 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 a home assistant, but oh, it's okay for now. I get to see some of the statuses of last time it went off, how's the status of the Wi-Fi, some of those those kinds of things. I can also also set the battery indicators so we can see right here. I've got two battery indicators, so I know kind of where the batteries are on each Ring cam, and then uh, kind of the weather. So this is my up all the time. This is what I watch during the day. I think it's kind of, I mean, I put this together in about an hour, Mike. I was just going to ask, how difficult was it to make this custom dashboard? I had to figure a few things out, like how to make a custom dashboard. Right. <laughs> it's not as intuitive out the gate, right? I need to go into the integrations, click on the device, say, uh, or no, go into the dashboard, clear it, then add a card shows up. You click on the card, pick a card type. And then it will, if it's, if it's got the right data set, then I'll just bring all that stuff right into the card and present it for you. Then like on the green uh, battery indicators, you can go in and set limits. Like I want it green till 90. I want it yellow down to 50. I want it red starting at 25, right? Type deal. So some pretty easy setups there um, to be able to get those kind of done. This will be my go-to dashboard. Like this will be something I spend, it's up all the time. You've got my brain churning because I need something like this as well. I need something that I can keep up because I'm down here in the basement. I have the same problem. Like I can't see out there now. And I'm always pulling up like the SiteHound webpage. And then, you know, mm -hmm. I'm asking a lady, but like just, I could just look up and see the status of all that. And I don't need to see all my security cameras. I just need like the front door to see if like deliveries are here and maybe like the garage, kind of like you have here. Well, Joe got me thinking on this, on his dashboard, I'd love, as we get into this, people send us pictures of your dashboards. Like, Oh what, yeah. What are you doing? And mark them up and do some things like, because I'd love to get your ideas. I, I, I just did this on my own. I'm sure. I would love that. Right. I'm sure there's better ways to do this. Uh, and so I'd, we'd love to see your pictures. One more, Mike, one more dashboard on here just before. Well, yeah, I and I was going to mention, if you want an easy way to do that, I would actually say probably the easiest way for us to have access to those and for everyone to see them, uh, you can put them in the hashtag smart home channel on Discord. Could be a good place to kind of people could start aggregating and talking about them and commenting on them. Um, Why don't you make a, uh, let's see, I guess we can put it in the Unraid. The Unraid There's smart home. Is We have that, or would you want, where do you want it? Unraid? Uh, do we have a Do we have a home assistant one? Uh, we, we've just been talking about that in smart home. Let's just we'll do it in the smart home. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it there. Um, last dashboard that I made just because I could is called What's On, and these are all the various media devices that we have in the house. You can see right here on the screen up over my left shoulder, I am playing a YouTube video that is really just a three hour video I made of all the background stuff you know it's our album art for for uh, the show that you see that playing currently on the it's um on the basement tv which is a chromecast device if sarah was watching uh, off the nvidia shield or if i was playing things off the speakers down here you would see that or not my son is playing on his tv that hal 9000 is his tv and, or if we were doing something on the Xbox, all those are available there. And I could see kind of what was playing. I don't really care. And I, sometimes I feel like I'm spying on people. Well, <laughs> it's funny you say that because, Jim, if you add Plex into Home Assistant, um, it has this same graphic, but it doesn't matter what they're playing it on. It just says like, hey, someone, it says who it is, what they're watching, what they're watching it on. And it just, so that populates into that automatic dashboard. So now because I share my library with, 
family and friends. I and it it creates a new thing for each device they do it on. I have like fifty of these, and whenever anyone starts watching Plex, like it starts to just become almost like a Christmas show, and I feel really creepy when it's like family and friends of like what they're watching on Plex. I, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know how long I keep this dashboard. Now it's just Sarah and I, and I so I don't. She's never, you know, it's it. I'm not creeping out on her. But I kind of like it though, because it tells yeah. you maybe if something got left on. Yeah. For yeah. me, when I get down here, our kids are constantly watching stuff in the living room and our bedroom. I would love to know if they left on. And we have NVIDIA Shields for both of those. Maybe that's a really good idea to monitor. Well, what's kind of cool about it, Mike, is if I, if say somebody did, the kids are gone and somebody did leave it on, uh, I just, I just stopped it. And then if you're like, no, okay, we just need to turn that off. Right. I just turned oh, off the screen from here and it goes blank. Right now it's going to switch over to the Chromecast and still be on. I don't have, I can't turn the TV off, but I, at least I turned uh, the media services for the Chromecast off. And right. So kind of a cool way of what well, I think your, your use case is right. Like, did we leave something on? Did the kids leave something on? Is Barney still, nobody watches Barney anymore. Right. Is Barney still, you know, did somebody, did somebody leave that on? It's kind of one of those things that I don't know. But the, the cool thing, and I guess what I'd encourage folks to do who are going along this home assistant journey with us is I didn't I didn't learn dashboards until I just started trying. You know, Joe's yeah. dashboard looks great. <laughs> Joe uses some mojo to get that done. This oh, was a lot. Yeah. yeah. This was out of the box, you know, and good enough for me. I mean, listen, I'm going to install Joe's dashboard. <laughs> Let's just be really clear. There's some really cool graphics in there that I want to, I want to take advantage of. But I think I thought it was super important to at least understand before I start doing that, kind of understand the, you know, what's the how did how are these built? What are they looking for? How do sensors work? Yeah, and you set some things up. Um, you you also get the ability to do some if this then that, which I haven't really messed with kind of things. But there's integration. And there's triggers in there as well. Hey, when this triggers, do this here type deal. Show this on the dashboard, whatever, whatever that might be. Mike might be one of those kinds of situations. If the garage door is open, flash this box red, right? Well, and, and that's what I would love to, what I was trying to do too, and, and you would have a good use case for this is, hey, if you sense motion at the front door, just pop that camera up full screen on the dashboard. How cool would that be? Because if you already have that dashboard, it also just maximizes that. And you're like, oh, well, it kind of gets your attention and shows you what's going on at the front door. I would love that. Jim, there's also, I have seen some um, people in the home assistant community have, and I, I there's, a, there's some very in-depth tutorials on how to do this, but they have literally taken their floor plan of their home and then they put the little light symbols wherever those lights actually are. And they've created a like little animations for if they're on and it's literally so their dashboard is a floor plan of their home and they can just tap on all it like i don't know how i think that's very complex uh that's not definitely built into the home assistant lovelace stuff uh but man i have seen some really insane dashboards when it comes to getting that level of detail and just visually stunning yeah and you can you know you can build this on your desktop um you don't have to have a surface you don't have to have a tablet i mean uh, i'll show you you know, some of the things I just showed you right here, I'm actually in dark mode. So these look a little bit different, but that's the, that's the ring dashboard. Looks a little different because the screen, the screen size is different. And I'll be honest, I kind of built it for the resolution of the, um, of the surface as opposed to this monitor that we're currently looking at, but they don't look all that much different. You know, I can kind of see they, they definitely respond faster because this PC is not struggling like the other one was, uh, you know, the printer, all lights, Again, look at the difference here. Like the all lights fit on one screen when we were on the surface, right? The they didn't. Uh, here, let me see if I can go back to that. I'll just I'll just toggle between those two, and so it it is responding now. I could change some things to get this done, but there's all lights, uh, and this is all lights off the surface. This looks like this is what I want. They're all on a page. Yeah. Oh, because it looks like you have the left minimized. That yeah. left menu bar is minimized on there. It's it's minimized on both. And I'm sure Joe can give us some. On the other one, no, see how it shows all the words on the left menu? Oh, that's true. oh yeah. If you yeah. just close that hamburger. Oh, look at you. There you go. Look at you. Now I feel but like I, But I agree. I've had the same problem because I was building it for my iPad. Um, and the iPad is like much smaller 
then I, I was on my desk. I'm like, oh, this looks great. I can fit everything. I go to my iPad. I'm like, oh, now I have to scroll to see all this stuff. And that's not what I want. I want, right. you know, like you to be able to look at it and see everything in one little glance. Yeah, you kind of want it all in one spot. So I wonder um, if you could, I mean, you could probably just have a Pi running all, like if you had a monitor that you wanted to devote to this, you could just probably run on a Raspberry Pi yeah. uh, with a little, I guess the keyboard mouse input wouldn't be that great, but. Your furnace came back on, I assume. It did. <laughs> Man, you're good. Yeah, it, it must be really loud tonight. Uh, no, it's n no worries. Um, I do have a 24-inch touchscreen monitor that I bought years ago. Schoonover and I in the days were talking about putting a big screen in your kitchen, and I actually installed it for a while. I put the Dell Mini behind it. Just never really caught on and that to have that in the house. What was surprising is a 24-inch touchscreen couldn't catch on, but a 5-inch Echo, 5-inch Show, yeah definitely caught on like now part of it was we were trying to use cortana which wasn't ready and right. the echo is ready right yeah. so different you know different use cases so that touchscreen is down here and i just recently plugged in the mini to it and i could run the dashboards up there but yeah. i look this direction like i want to see right I want here them here right yep i kind of want them here so it just kind of made more sense to run it on the surface Surface is on its last legs, and it, it will make a great iPad, so to speak, of just sitting in the cradle, serving up dashboards um, going forward. As soon as I, you know, as soon as I stop sharing down here and I close, um, I close StreamYard, responsiveness comes back. <clears throat> so, um, man, a busy week for me when it, when it came to creating, well, one, to watching every Mac video. <laughs> that's been made. Yeah. I watched it a lot of it's like me and ham radio. I think I've watched every ham radio video. Yeah, I could probably tear that thing down now, just to be honest. <laughs> I watched three or four different teardowns. Right. Um, which just kills me to watch. Like it's a brand new Mac mini and they're just tearing the thing apart. And you're like, oh, that's hurting me. Stop, stop. But I want to, but keep going. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I want to see it, you know, kind of thing. Um, and then uh, spent a good night um, really just building these dashboards. I kind of built these in a night and it was a good, cause I felt like I needed to really get a handle on these dashboards. You know, I, by the way, I went your route. So this is a VM now on Unraid. Very nice. I went through, got that. By the way, I did it about eight times. <laughs> I kept messing some things up and four gig on that server is probably not enough. Like it really required two gig just for home assistant and the VM. I tried right. it on a gig and it it's really struggled. So I, I'm, I'm using now, if I was trying to run other VMs, I probably wouldn't have too many options. I probably would need to go to, you know, a bigger box. To yeah. Well, it sounds like you're having some issues too with your SSD in there. Did, that yeah. 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 Seems to be back. It seems to be back now and everything seems to be doing fine. But I think when I installed it the last time, I pushed a little too hard on the on the SATA. Mm. I, I think I might have crunched it. So we'll see how long that thing lasts. The Unraid box is really a test box at this point. I mean, it housing right. Chia plots, but it's kind of a mess around test box. Although, Home Assistant, Mike, every time you get me into this. <laughs> right? right? Have you had to add any add-ons yet? No, I haven't. And, so far. and I haven't. or have you taken a snapshot just in case you need to nuke it? Uh, I am backing yeah. up I'm backing up the apps if that's what. No, it, so the one of the benefits of running Home Assistant as a VM, just go in there and go to that supervisor tab. You can go to the snapshots and you can just create a snapshot and download it to your local computer. And then if you ever need a new Home Assistant, you just, uh, when you, you set up Home Assistant again in the first startup screen, instead of typing in new information, it says, hey, do you want to load from a snapshot? And you say, yep. And then it's your backup and running in seconds compared to getting everything set back up. Which would be smart, especially because now that you have custom dashboards, that would take some time to recreate. Good, good to learn, though. I mean, it was a good learning experience to work through how VMs work and what are the various options to set them up. Your video was super helpful. Like, good. The, Mike made a YouTube video. Did we talk about that last week? No, that I, out, I just did it this week. It's in our Discord group, and he and he talks about just kind of how to set up the VM for for Home Assistant on Unraid, and it's just it's exactly what you need. One thing, Mike, there's when you're installing, um, when you're installing it and you click whatever, and then you go back over to the dashboard, 
you show a little bit of there's like if you go into the no vnc is that what it's called no vnc yeah to see the screen you don't show that thing can run for a while i mean it can take a while oh got it you kind of go through that pretty fast so yeah using mike's instructions he'll go over to that it does take a little while at least on my box took a little while to install and start and deliver all the services to to get everything rolling so Got that it. install part may, may may take a few minutes to get it done. Mike, yeah, we're getting the uh, YouTube video, the YouTube channel back up and running. So we've got, I just cranked out three tutorials this week. Uh, we're going to be covering a lot of different topics. So we actually just did how to install WireGuard VPN on Unraid 2. Uh, we did using the GoXLR with Twitch. So uh, so we, actually I did. I had one question for the community. So this is a, a takeaway. I need your guys' input. I so I love making screencast tutorials and I used I used on the Mac ScreenFlow and I freaking loved that app. I would have paid a thousand dollars for the ScreenFlow app. I did so much in ScreenFlow. I loved it. The benefit being it records your webcam and the screen at the same time, but it doesn't like then at the end you can move your camera wherever you want. Like I could use OBS, right? But whatever I'm recording, then you're done. You can't be moving your camera around, shrink it, expand it. Um, so I bought Camtasia for Windows, which is like supposed to be like, I thought like the end all be all, like I paid a decent amount of money for this. And 50% of the time when I record, it is stuttery garbage that I can't use. And so I'm with like level two tech support now with Camtasia. And they're telling me like, oh, well, don't use your GoXLR, like unplug that. That's probably cost. And I'm like, guys, like if I'm having to unplug different peripherals to be able to use your product, so if you guys have a replacement of an app that records your webcam and your screen at the same time, um, that's not Camtasia, but that is really good and it has editing built in. Cause like Camtasia has, as soon as you record, then it takes you into the editor. You can have a bunch of great functionality. So uh, let me know because if I can't get Camtasia working, I'm, I've now become addicted to making these tutorials again. And uh, I might have to go back to the Mac. I might be back on the Mac to use ScreenFlow just so I can have an app that works and lets me do it. But I'm sure there's something else out there that you guys are using, um, especially for education now, uh, that that could work that's not Camtasia. And maybe they'll get Camtasia working for me. It's just it's just not. All right. That was it. <laughs> no, good good enough. Uh, I, I was going to say, uh, you'll have to go back to the Mac. And you said it, you said it yourself. Yeah, I might have to. So I have to steal the laptop on those nights when I want to make the tutorials. Can I make a quick observation about the show really quick? So um, super great audience involvement during the Mac portion. Soon as we went to Home Assistant and stopped talking about the Mac and I bought the thing, it just dropped off the planet. Like everybody just, like the excitement was over. <laughs> I think people came just to see if it was actually true. And it was. And then I distracted everybody so much, nobody noticed I got new glasses. So it's been been two or three oh, years yeah. since I got some new spectacles. They're not all that, to be honest. They're not all that much different than the old ones. We're a little bit bigger. I need some more. <laughs> I need some more space down here for the bifocals. <laughs> Just saying. It, 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 it comes with age, huh? It was getting pretty bad. The other ones were a little thinner, and it just had a little tiny space. Uh, I bought those at Warby Parker. By the way, if you've, I don't have an affiliate link, and I'm not trying to pimp them. But if um, we've had such a great experience with Warby Parker, I scratched those and they replaced them, no questions asked. Went uh, this time, I went with Shopco Optical. They're kind of our local optical place, and they they gave me a great deal as well. So, but my glasses are expensive, no matter what like almost as expensive as that Mac that I just bought. So, Oh, really? Well, I'm pretty blind. And so it takes the high index. Yeah. Highest of index. And then I get all those coatings. They have a, you know, a UV, UV plus whatever for the screen and, and you know, whatever. All yeah. I just got VR built into them now. Just and... do it. Yeah. Just do it. I don't, I don't want to know the details. Just, make them great because I will absolutely wear these for three more years. And, you know, so that works out to a couple hundred bucks a year, which is, which is not terrible. But uh, uh, Dave said he stayed, Dave, we appreciate you, you saying that he said he stayed, uh, enjoyed listening. So think, I don't think anybody went anywhere. I just think they weren't as engaged in the, <laughs> the home assistant conversation as they were in the Mac one, which is great though. No, great conversation, Mike. And, and thanks for uh, working me through it. Well, who knows what I'll buy in the post show? You you might want to stay around. There could be something else coming up in the. I just I think you need an iPad Pro to go along with the uh, Mac Mini. Just got my stimulus check today, so you know who knows. 
who knows what's going to happen. Don't forget. Oh, that, was, that was really delayed. It took a, it, they, I got a paper for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, wow. Okay. The, fir- the first one went to my bank account. This one took paper. Oh, huh. okay. Well, anyways, no, no political commentary. Big thanks to our Patreon supporters uh, for doing that. For those uh, you going across the screen right now, I appreciate your support. Brian just joined us this week as well. So Brian's out in the chat room, Brian. Brian F. as he goes by in the chat room. Thanks for for joining us in that. Uh, by the way, Brian, uh, I sent out your coin. I need to put one of those on my desk. Um, I sent out your home gadget geeks coin this week with the right postage, so it should be a, should be a right. You won't get a postage due. Uh... You won't. I'm such a jackass. You will. Uh, so that should be arriving either this weekend or next week. And uh, so anybody who supports us at, us at that level, Ron helps by 3D printing those coins. They're pretty cool. And I'll send those, send one of those out to you for supporting us at the five dollar level. I appreciate it. Uh, send us an email, Jim at theaverageguy.tv. Don't forget, leave us a message. I love Kyle. Thank you for doing that. And if you want to send your message, uh, go to homegadgetgeeks.com. Just do it at the end of the show here. Tell me how crazy or stupid or whatever I am for buying this Mac. Um, homegadgetgeeks.com and click the button on the right. Just record a message. We want to hear from you. You can contact the show. I mentioned Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv, uh, at Jay Collison, at Uyghur Tech, for those of us on Twitter. Mike, will Twitter be fun anymore? I mean, now that the the biggest... That was a nice little rush there that week, talking about the Mac. Yeah, but but the biggest the the biggest guy on Twitter has now left, right? They banned him. I don't think he's... Oh, you're guy. talking about that. <laughs> I think yeah. Twitter's dead. I'm, I'm just going to say it. I think Twitter's dead, but... We're, no, actually, we had a really good week on Twitter. There's a lot of conversation what's going on around this Mac, as much as in the Discord channel. And so if you want to follow us on Twitter, a great way to do that. Tony Rayner is the Twitter king. He probably thought I was talking about him, by the way. When I said big deal, he was probably he probably thought, well, wait a minute, I'm still there. So uh, our big deal, Tony. Yeah, that, totally. Uh, just a reminder that the average guy.tv, both web and media hosting, powered by Maple Grove Partners, gets secure, reliable, high speed hosting. From people that you know and you trust, you know that's Christian. You can get more information. Plans start as little as $10 a month. MapleGrovePartners.com. Christian can take care of anything. This week, Mike, he informed me I changed my DNS records over. He's like, we are nearing the dual. We are. I got the email from him. Yeah. So I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, uh, uh I'm I think I'm one of those that's gonna need a set of cuz log in into your host. I, I can help you with it. Okay. This may be one area where I I can help you. Um, so we're getting really close to having redundant um, lo- co-locations uh, for Maple Grove Partners. So super cool. At the price, you're not going to get anything better. MapleGrovePartners.com. I want to thank you for coming out tonight. I think the next is going to be tough for me to sleep over the next three weeks as I patiently await the uh, the Mac Mini coming in. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I'm going to rearrange some things down here, start thinking about I can't move too many things at the moment, but start thinking about how I'm going to rearrange it. I hope it comes early for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, me too. That'd be great to get that kind of, hey, surprise, coming early. Um, we are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern. Mike and I have the reins uh, for the next couple weeks, I mentioned. Um, and so it'll be us kind of catching you up on things. But Aaron Lawrence is coming back. John Maddox is coming from Channels. Jay Madison is coming back on. And I may ping in on a bunch of Mac stuff because I think he's a Mac guy. Do, do you remember him being a Mac guy? Is he, do you know? Or is he a oh, I'm trying to remember. I think, I think he was Mac. Yeah. So by the time we have Jay on, I'll have some, maybe I can take some desk efficiency tips from, because that dude, that dude is, when it comes to efficiency and good looking, he's got I mean, it down. Not only is he good looking, but his desk is amazing. So, uh, <laughs> Jay Jay's coming on, and then uh, Dwayne Robinson's coming back. We haven't seen Dwayne in a while, and Dwayne's been doing some stuff. So, that'll be a show, Mike. I'll say three words, and then Dwayne is off to the races. So, uh, Dwayne will be back. On. So, we have a bunch coming up for you. Uh, stay tuned for all those things that are going on. We'll be back next Thursday with some updates. Michael, come by then. Doubt it. With that, we'll say goodbye.